Starting off with the desk that holds everything together, it's one of these, but the higher end version. So my video set has always had this. I mean, not always, but it has had this for a couple of months now. And this is an Everdesk Max Plus or something. It's, I don't know what it's called, but basically Everdesk has like three lines of sit-stand desks. All three of them are slightly different. So this is the lowest end. It's the cheapest, but it comes in a bigger size, which is why I use it for my video set. I need a big table, plenty of real estate. The desk that I use for my editing setup is the higher end version with a very organic and natural feeling wood grain that looks I think very 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 gorgeous a nice glossy finish it comes in teak teak and oak and yeah both of them are very very good now the reason i'm saying it's very good is because i'm a shill that's right i have affiliate links for this test so what happened was i gave the everdesk that i was initially sent for review a very positive review i liked it a lot the build quality the accessories the features and the fact that it used a knob instead of buttons for height adjust made it feel a lot more of a well-refined product than a lot of the other sits and desks out there so everdesk asked me would you like to be in Part of my affiliate program and i was like uh yeah sure so i got an affiliate link with them and i ended up you know so linked in the description if you buy a desk using that link i get a small kickback which will help me out because uh, I am going to be creating some new channels. This channel will be dead, which means no income from sponsored videos anymore. But either way, I really do like this desk, which is why I agreed to the Affiliate Link program in the first place. And I think it's very, very nice. It's comfortable. The ergonomics of a sit-stand desk are underrated. Like it helps you stand, which is comfortable. It helps you adjust the height to exactly and precisely what is comfortable for you. And it's also just very convenient. Like if you want to reach the cables and manage your cables underneath your table, which is something that I don't do because I'm lazy, you can just kind of raise the table and then have more space and stuff like that it's just it just makes a lot of sense I like the Everdesk Max Plus series X Max tables all that stuff just check it out link in the description if you buy that link I get a kickback and you'll be helping me out here quite a bit moving on let's talk about the displays that I use and the main reason I'm actually doing this video is actually because of these displays I agreed to Huawei and I told Huawei that you know can I have this main view display that I reviewed and I really liked in exchange I talk about how I use it in my editing setup so this is that video right here this is the Huawei main view and in my review I absolutely loved it like I really really liked it the 3 by 2 aspect ratio was the killer feature for me a lot of great real estate but on top of that it had good colors 10 bit it had really really accurate colors straight out of the box with minimal calibration good viewing angles and it had a speaker that actually was good enough that I did not have to worry at all about you know using desktop monitors like for just YouTube videos and video editing the speakers in this monitor are good enough it's not going to shake my world but I'm also not trying to party my editing setup I'm trying to just get work done so it means that I don't have to have extra monitors and speakers making for a cleaner setup which feels a lot nicer and I just like this display a lot it's got good high adjust a good built-in stand it's an all-in-one package that you really don't have to worry about and if you plug in your laptop via USB-C you get all this additional I.O. That, like, it becomes like a USB port hub, which is super, super convenient. The audio running through display port into this monitor, so I have the speakers on by default, but if I need better audio quality, I plug my headphones into the headphone jack inside the monitor and it auto switches and then boom, I'm just listening to audio via my headphones. Very convenient, very clean setup. Secondary monitor is vertical. This is like just a view Sonic 1080p display. You can never have enough screen real estate. Now, after you use two monitors, you can never go back to a single monitor setup. It's just painful. It's really just painful that you have to alt-tab to see different things all the time. So, you know, having two monitors is essential in any sort of productivity setup. In my opinion, one of the best upgrades you can get. And your second monitor doesn't have to be expensive. Like, it can be a cheap 1080p display that you buy for like 30, 40 bucks. You will get an exponential increase in productivity just by getting a second monitor. And if possible, mount your second monitor in vertical because most of what you end up putting on your second monitor tends to be something that will benefit from a vertical layout. Things like Spotify, documents. I didn't realize how much I liked vertical monitors monitors for my second monitors until I did this and now that I've done it I absolutely love it definitely recommend as for keyboard mouse mic mouse pad these are like your standard desk accessories nothing's really changed here except for the keyboard it's the KBD Lite R3 from KBD fans it's got Arco radiant red switches although I think it got scammed and it got CIY radiant red switches in the mail looped with Arco dual double shot night runner keycaps these are really nice keycaps I like this keyboard it performs very well it's very thocky sounds great I love it the mouse here is the Techware EXO this was sent to me by Techware and I really liked it not for gaming per se because it's too heavy for Valorant but it is definitely very comfortable for video editing it's very accurate with amazing battery life though I just run it permanently plugged in because I don't care and I'm a thug in terms of mic I use a blue Yeti this is for just like short insert blue you know voiceovers people say it doesn't sound that great but frankly it's good enough apart from that we've got a few other small knickknacks I mean SE cards vernier calipers ops, a bunch of messy things and uh, and just like this little koala cup that my sister gave me which I always have to shut out because if not she will scold me let's talk about my PC which is the last but not 
least part of this, you know, editing setup tour, I think a lot of people want to know what the hell this PC is. It, it, you rarely see it on camera because I rarely shoot from like my editing setup angle these days, but it is the X Tech after all. And even though this channel is about to be terminated, I'll give you a final PC setup tour. So um, let's talk about it. It's got a 12600KF, which is a 10 core processor, six big cores and four small cores with six of those cores having hyper threading. I like the performance a lot. And also I was having a crisis when I was, you know, um, shooting my Intel 12th gen video. My PC died, so I was like, Aftershock, can I just buy this 12th gen CPU off of you? Can I just buy this 12th gen parts and keep it? I know they're loan units, and they were like, yeah, sure. And then I transferred them the money and I got to buy it. So Pro 600 KF, Z690 ERS Master, which is absolutely overkill, but it was just what I could get my hands on. It was very convenient. I just needed editing really urgently. And it had 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM. So this is 5200 megahertz, very nice and fast, very, very good. Not a big deal to have the fastest RAM. I think cache latency is actually more important than 12th gen, but um, it's just what I could get my hands on. And 32 gigs is nice and big, so that's good. The CPU is being cooled by an Aftershock all-in-one water cooler, just because it was convenient to get. I can upgrade it with like a Cooler Master ML360 if I wanted to, but this one's good. It's thick, it's quiet, and it runs very, very, very well. And all this is stored in a Fractal Design Define R6 compact case. I absolutely love this case. I think it looks beautiful, but it is a very noisy case if you have the side and front panels on. Actually, it was partly because of the Fractal Design Lumen cooler that I was using before. It was not enough for the amount of airflow that I was providing it. It was not enough for the CPU that I was trying to cool with it. I was trying to cool a 3700X in a case with very minimal airflow. So it was always whirring up and the fan was fan noise was very intolerable. So what ended up happening was I was like, screw it. And I removed the front and side panels with the Define R6 compact and just ran it like that. And it ran a lot more quiet because it was getting so much airflow. The fans never ever spun up. But now that I have a more beefy aftershock cooler that's thick and it doesn't have to spin up as much, I actually don't need to remove the side and front panels. But I kind of like how it looks. It looks very wretched, very uh, Mad Max-ish, very uh, rundown, which is kind of my whole channel's aesthetic. And uh, it runs very quiet and ultra silent. And I frankly think that it's quieter to run this PC case without side and front panels than with side and front panels because uh, side and front panels just suffocate the hell out of it, which is frankly very annoying. As for power supply, this is the Factor 1000P Ion power supply. I've talked about it in the past. It's overkill, 80 plus platinum, but it's good. And for GPU, we're running a 3060 Ti. This is a Zotac mini one. It's just the cheapest I could get. As for SSD and storage, we've got two 1TB SSDs here. One is a Samsung 970 EVO, I think it's called. And then the other is the Gamix S11 Pro SSD. Both are nice and fast. I think one of them is Gen 4, but frankly, I don't care because for video editing, it's very hard to tell the difference. And when transferring footage from NVMe SSD to the other, it's kind of like you're, you're bottlenecked usually by the interface anyway. So like if you're transferring data from an SD card or a hard drive or to an SD card or a hard drive, you're bottlenecked by the SD card or the hard drive anyway. So it doesn't really matter that you have Gen 4, you're still gonna be bottlenecked, so. But it's a very powerful PC. I don't really need to upgrade it for a long period of time. Chances are though, I'm gonna sell my gaming laptop and move to Mac because uh, the, the direction that my content is going, the way I wanna move and do things as time goes on, probably will benefit from a very portable editing machine like the MacBook Pro, which I wanna get. But I probably can't afford, so. One day, maybe, one day. Uh, as for now, you know, this is my video editing setup and it will probably stay the same because as ZX Tech goes dormant and gets terminated from my life essentially, what's gonna end up happening is I don't have as many tech sponsors or you know the ability to get my hands on cool equipment and cool upgrades. So chances are, you know, this setup's gonna stay the same for quite some time. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't subscribe because I won't be consistently making videos after like, in like, after like March. So yeah, like though and comment if you want and I'll see you guys around on my other channels. Bye.